This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and you might recall a while back a guy brought me a 19 inch Sanyo black plastic crap TV from the late 90s that I repaired for him by replacing a few capacitors and soldering some bad solder connections. Well, today the same guy brought me another Sanyo. This one's older. This is a 19 inch set from November 1992. Now, Normally if I saw such a TV on the side of the road, it would stay right where it was. If I saw it at the thrift store, it would stay right where it was. And the reason being is because sets this new are really too new for my uh, collecting interest. And it's not like I can unload them off on anybody. I mean, the last black plastic crap TV I had was a 32-inch Sanyo, and it took me offering it to five different people to be able to even give it to somebody. Everybody else turned it down because it wasn't flat enough for them. But, never mind my uh, collecting preferences, you know, it, it is good to see that someone actually wants to repair an older CRT set every now and then. And the guy who owns this doesn't want a flat screen, so we're going to try to make it operational again. Now, he says the picture bounces up and down now which sounds to me like it has a vertical problem, most likely bad capacitors and probably cold solder joints on the vertical output I see. That's usually what went wrong with these Sanyo sets. Okay, converter box is plugged in and turned on. Let's power it up and see what happens. Will help if I press the right button. Channel 3, let's try channel 4, why don't we? There we go. It's not... These buttons are all whacked out, which is another common problem with these. You press the volume button and the channel changes, or the sound goes in an opposite opposite direction or something happens you don't want to happen but we're not going to worry about that. I don't see any bouncing picture. It looks pretty stable to me. But I will open it up and check some of the basic things there that go wrong with these. Here we are with the back removed. We can tell by the amount of filth inside that this is a high hours TV. You know, high voltage attracts dirt and cigarette uh, paste, so uh, the more that you find in a set, uh, the more hours it's got on it. You think a modern flat screen would last this long? Of course not. Well, based on his complaint, this is the first area we need to look in, the vertical output stage. This is the IC on this heat sink that, like I said before, is prone for developing bad solder connections. And if I remember right, this capacitor here would fail. It's something like a 2.2 microfarad, but when it failed, it would cause uh, vertical linearity problems. Looks like this one might have already been replaced at some point. And then you have these other capacitors that are around this big power resistor here. So as old as this set is, it'd probably be a good idea to pull each one of them and check them. And any of them that don't check okay, just replace them. I'm not going to do like some people do on the TV collector groups that I've seen. They'll get an 80s or 90s TV, and, and they're all gung-ho on wholesale recapping the whole chassis. Well, personally, in my opinion, I don't think that's necessary. Sets of that vintage are new enough that you don't have to do a wholesale recap on them. Just find the capacitors that are bad, and those will usually be in the vertical circuit power supply or the horizontal circuit, and that'll usually take care of your problems. I can tell by the solder here that it looks like this capacitor has indeed been replaced. You know, looking at it, looking at it straight on without the camera, you can tell the, the solder is shinier than these other connections. So, yeah, I'd say that's been replaced. I'm going to go ahead and redo these pins on the IC, and we'll check these other capacitors and see where that takes us. Alright, we're back in business. 
I replaced this pile of capacitors that you see here, all of which came out of the power supply, vertical circuit, and horizontal circuit. They all checked a little iffy, some more iffy than others, but I decided to go ahead and get rid of them and replace them with fresh stock, high temperature electrolytics. And it should be good to go for a number of years unless something catastrophic like the flyback burns up or the lightning hits it or something. But anyway, I replaced those capacitors. I adjusted the vertical size control. I adjusted the focus control on the flyback transformer. I cleaned enough uh, cigarette paste off of this TV screen to start my own cigarette factory, about 25 years worth, and that by itself improved the picture a great deal. And I pretty much re-soldered everything in the vertical, horizontal, and power supply circuits. Those areas of the board are hotter, hotter than any other area of the set, which means they're more susceptible to connections breaking loose and parts failing from high temperatures. I didn't really worry about these tack switches on the front of the set because number one, I don't have any in stock and it's probably not worth ordering any. He can just use a remote control to operate the TV, which is probably what he's been doing anyway. Now I will tell you, those switches when they fail, the symptoms are either, for example, I might press volume up and it might change channel, or it might turn the set off, or in some cases it might change channels on its own, or the TV might turn on in the middle of the night. And you can check those switches all day long with your own meter. They will not check bad. Sometimes you can clean them, which I did that, and it'll help a little bit, but ultimately the, the, the longest lasting fix is just to replace the buttons. I think what causes that is the buttons get all gunked up and and they develop stray capacitance and it, it tricks the microprocessor into thinking that you want it to do something that it that uh, you don't want it to do. So there you have it. 1992 Sanyo TV. Hopefully should last him a few more years. Now I said earlier that I would not bother dragging home a TV like this for my personal use because it's too new for me. However, this kind of TV right here, it just demonstrates the durability of these older CRT sets. Here we have one that's 25 years old and still has a very nice picture on it. Now, do you think a modern flat screen will last 25 years? No, it won't. It'll be doing good the last two or three years, and I'm being nice. Especially when it comes to the, the low-end stuff from Walmart, like what so many people buy. And when I buy a TV, I don't want to have to replace it in three years. I'd be, I'm just as content watching something like this, like the 1989 GE that I bought a few years ago at the estate sale for $12, and it's still working great, and I'll keep it as long as it'll work. All right, there you go. Flat, the Sanyo is ready for some more life. Thanks for watching, and more to come later.